And Kyle, there aren't many jobs that are pretty easy right here, right? There's not a single one. Look at these guys trying to refill this thing right now. Just like Benny said, when they were over there a minute ago and they had a fire, the guy with the big hose shot everything he had in his tank. They got to come back over here and refill. The problem was the hose was stuck on it. It was still under pressure, so we had a massive leak over here for a little while. Obviously, you just saw that. It just blew off, so now they're going to fill it back up. I mean, and that's the way it is. It, it, when one fire truck goes down, there's another one sitting here in the infield that's back in line in front of it. These guys are doing this on the side. They go to the back of the line. There's another fire truck ready to take its place right now. I tell you, it's great that you have that. Not only have a, a first line fire system, they have a second and third line. Hopefully, you don't need them. It's good that NASCAR has them standing by. Those guys from the Avoca Volunteer Fire Department. Down to Bill Weber, more work being done in your area. Well, Sandy Jones was optimistic, but Elliot Sadler believes he has a hole in his radiator now. Believes he's losing water, temperature soaring. They've got a radiator out. They're talking it over. He will be coming behind the wall. They'll try and replace that radiator, then get him back out there. He is sixth in points, 18th last week. But before that, I think it was four top twos in a row. And now the 29 is behind the wall. Elliot Sadler wheels it back here, and they're going to go ahead and replace that radiator. Hey, Weber. Go join in the, hang on a second, Benny. I'm not done yet. Uh, the 36 car of Todd Bodine has a big hole on the right front of the grill. That got punched when Sadler spun over it between turns one and two. They're concerned about Todd's car. It's very tight, and now it's even tighter with that hole. They're making a piece down here in the pit to slap on it when Todd pits. Meanwhile, the work continues on the 29 car of Elliott Sadler. He sits in the car very disgusted. They're going to try and find the problem and obviously fix it. That could be putting in this new radiator. Now, I was I was going to say is it's a shame that they didn't try to decide to do this the first or second lap because it would be done now and there'll only be four or five laps behind because right now the caution light has turned off the light we're going racing next time by and he'll be still on 12 laps that's all i want to say remember well as bill was trying to say before benny jumped in there that he think it's Sadler is six to the point and he just three points out of this spot but now they is on pit road i should say behind pit road with a radiator change Right, been coming earlier than about had it done. That's a great point. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta raise your hand when you want to speak. Yeah. We're just good see you. All right. We're getting ready to restart it here. Hey, Bill. I think what they wanted to do, Benny, is they didn't think originally the problem was that bad, and they'd already given up all that track position. They did not want to give up anymore, so they were hoping the problem was not as bad as it turns out to be. They've been telling Elliot to watch the gauges. He had to come in three flight down. Cars on the restart. Got McLaughlin. Got another car. Well, I'm trying to get Michael Walker. Well, that's Michael Walker, but and LaJoy's got a problem. He's up high, out of the groove. LaJoy, the point. Right, right, right rear, I think. Went right rear, they think. But he yeah. can't get down. All the cars come by. He can't get Be down. down. Bill Weber. Crew scrambling, you heard the call, flat right rear. LaJoy's gonna try and work his way back here. Almost something identical to last year. Early bottom for LaJoy. Now he will point you buddy. While he tries to get down here. Do what you can. Right, oh. right in front of him. Right in front of him, there's a big play. Outside. Take it. A huge collection of cars over in turn two. You heard the spotter say, trouble, trouble. And Todd Bodine, the guy in second place, was in that wreck. I don't know how much damage, but he's also he was in the crash. Well, he is down and away. Here's Jason Keller, Slim Jim Chevy. He's got damage on both the front and the rear. He was involved, and most of the cars have pulled away. The safety car is on the racetrack. There is Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is our leader in the car number seven. Then is that unbelievable or what? Dale well, Earnhardt Jr. is leading this race. First time he's ever been to Bristol. That's impressive. Now, we were following Randy LaJoy when this was this happening with that flat right rear tire, and he's trying to get to the inside, and here's the, here's the contact. There you see the 36 car. Todd Bodine gets bumped behind by Jeff Krogh. Around he goes. Randy LaJoy able to drive by all the the incidents without any damage. And it's going to be a huge break for Andrew LaJoy. He was going to have to stop under green. Now he gets to stop under caution. All right, from Stevie Ree's Big A Auto Parts in-car camera. Which way do you go? He chose the right way and got him another gear and took off. And the 74 car has not yet been on pit road. But the 36, the Stanley Tools Pontiac of Todd Bodine is headed to you, Bill Weber. Well, a frustrated Todd Bodine brings his car to a stop here on pit road around to the right side. They'll change the right side tires. The 
Tigers going to come around to the left side, but they will not chase those tires. Todd gets, to gets back out, does not want to take a chance on getting last. will catch up to the field. They probably come back in and get his left. And they also want to tape up that front right side of the grill. LaJoy, no sign yet, but should be pitting any time. And here he comes now. I can see him coming down pit road. So Randy LaJoy will be down pit road. He'll also only be able to get two tires. They want him to be smooth here on pit road. Because you have to get your tires so they can get back out, catch up to the field. Because you don't want to get lapped here under yellow. Easy to do under green, and you have to be cautious under yellow. They go around to the right side. Remember, LaJoy thought he had a flat right rear. Play cars in three. Right got plenty of time. Tires. Now they are going to try and do all four. This is surprising. Meanwhile, Todd Bodine also back in. He's going to get his Pace left car side turn four. He's right behind LaJoy. Left side's going on LaJoy. Left side's going on Bodine. Bodine is down. LaJoy down. They'll both make it out. Both get okay, 74, you beat the 36 out. You got one to go this time by, so catch up fast as you can, buddy. That's Bill Bum going to the spot. Okay, I think I'm back. Slash. Oh, Todd is going. All right, let's go back to Kyle Petty. Matt Gibson suddenly come in. They had to pick up the right side. He had a flat right side tire. They come back in and change left. They didn't think they could do them both at the same time without getting left, and they were real close changing right. They're back out now. All right, Matt Kent is coming back out. Well, see if we can sort of recap and show you again what just happened a moment ago. Okay, it's Randy LaJoy leading the race up there. See, he has about three or four car lead. leading. All of a sudden, you see the car start getting loose, and he slows down, and here comes Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes the lead, and we're about to go back to green flag race. All right, LaJoy was third in the spring, but in eight previous starts at Bristol, he has finished 20th or lower five times. His average finish 20.7. Lap 54, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is our leader with 10 feet away, close pursuit. Number 21, Michael Walker, Man Day 4, gets pushed behind the wall. Just after the restart, so we'll get an update on what's happening with Michael as you watch the battle up front between Earnhardt Jr., only his sixth ever Bush Grand National start, his fifth in 1997. This car is owned by Ed Whitaker. This is not Dale Earnhardt Sr.'s car. It's owned by Dale. Ed Whitaker, local team owner, Bush Grand National team owner. Car that Harry Dent drove for many years with a lot of success. And Ed was so impressed with Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Michigan. He called him last week and said, how about driving my car in Bristol? He though you've never been there. Just go up there so you can make the field. And Dale Jarrett off the pace then. He had just to move into the 11th position, but all of a sudden he slowed, headed for the pit. So he has a plan of what the situation is. It's all the car backfiring down off the racetrack as he takes the white rain machine. There is a white rain Gillette Ford down pit road for Dale Earnhardt, or Dale Jarrett, I should say. Some damage to the right front of that car as he comes in the pits. And we we'll see Steve Park, the winner last week, the three car. She tries to work on Mark Green. That's Mark Green, the 37. That is 11, 12, and 13th right there. The 37 is 11, the 3 is 12, and the 5 is the 13th. If we check in the Dale Jarrett pits with Kyle Petty. Dale Jarrett said that his car was overheating. He's been in the back of somebody, caved the rail in. First thing they did was reach in and start pulling wire and pulling out aluminum out of the ductwork itself, which can, which can get up in front of the radiator and cause the air not to flow through it and cause it to overheat. It looks like they're putting the wind in that down. It's going to be the end of the day for him. He'll be back tomorrow, though. We saw that replay from Stevie Reeves' in-car camera. Dale Jarrett was right on his bumper, so they were very close to that accident, so he got a piece of it. 